الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على وفي رحمة العالمين سيدنا محمد بن سعد الأجمعين وبعد يعطي اكسكيز ما بين السور ثرو so we may not come out as uh, forceful as usual so those of you who didn't come yesterday we began reading from Manaz and Sahinim who are stations of the wayfarers and we gave a little <coughs> lengthy introduction about uh, why this book is important and why we are uh, taking it upon ourselves to go through some of its uh, major points. And we said we would cover the first 10 uh, manazin out of 100, and we covered the first two yesterday, al-yaqadha wa tawbah al meaning awakening, someone deciding that they want to be different, change their life, have a more purposeful life, uh, have a more deliberate approach to their relationships, especially their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that begins with al yaqadha And we said that Imam al-Tarawi from Hirat, he said the first thing you need to think about is your blessings, your ni'am, all of the blessings that you have. So he's trying to take us on a path of gratitude, on a path of shukr, and not so much on a path of fear of punishment. And I thought that was very important, because that's usually what we hear nowadays. People try to scare us into compliance, when uh, the more sustainable route would be to become aware of all of the gifts that you have, and then to try to be thankful for that. And then comes Tawbah, repentance, which is realizing that after you awaken, that there are times when you will find yourself astray from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not realizing the blessings that you have, by using them in the wrong way, or in an appropriate way. So that requires Tawbah, to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that brings us to al muhasabah and muhasaba from hasaba yuhasibu muhasabatan is to take into account is to take into reckoning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says by the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hasaba fuzakum qabla an tuhasab take yourself into account before you are taken into account so there is the great hisab hisab yom al-qiyamah that we all believe in but before you get to that, have your own muhasabat, have your own hisab, so that you avoid the hisab, right? Or hisab al asir, the yom al by taking yourself into hisab now. Someone asked me yesterday, I think, <clears throat> we're going over all of this, it seems there's a lot of thinking to do and a lot of being uh, awareness and, you know, maybe it might lead one to depression. And I think, not that I would rather be depressed now than later, but I'd rather think about these things and look at them before it's too late. And the whole path is not like that, actually. Um, there has to be a, a period of tamhis, um, right? A period of, you know, putting yourself to the, the fire, so to speak so that later on you will find many of the fruits and the gifts that will come along. But that's not going to happen, usually, unless you're willing to put yourself through that. Unless you're willing to really take a look at yourself and say, I have things I need to work on, there's improvements that I need to make. Um, and only then, I think, inshallah, you'll find something much, much better down the road. But if you go through life thinking that you have everything and that you're pleased with what you are, who you are, and how you treat others and how your relationship with Allah is, this type of self-pleasure, uh, then you go through life and you haven't really lived it. You haven't really given yourself an opportunity to be the person that you can be. You're just a shell of a person because you're not living reality. You're not as good as you think you are. So this muhasaba starts with the verse, Allah Azza wa وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَتَنْظُرُ نَفْسُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ 
وإنما يسلك طريق المحاسبة بعد العزيمة على عقد التوبة والعزيمة لها ثلاثة أركان So he says that you will go on the path of muhasaba, right, path of reckoning, only after resolving to enter into repentance. He calls it aqdit tawbah, right, because it means not you make tawbah once and you're finished, or you only think about tawbah every time you make a mistake, but to realize that tawbah is hala da'ima. Something that you're doing consistently and constantly. Because there's no point where you might not be slipping and you need to go back. And Toba is going to differ for different people. Right? The, the least amount of Toba you need to make, mental Tia Right? At least all of us, at the very least, we waste time somehow. So the, the least that you could do then, in, in terms of your Toba, is recognizing that you waste time. And you have to be able to try to come back from that. So after Tawbah means now I am going into a mode where I realize I need to do Tawbah all the time. If you can do that, then you get a muhasaba. He calls it an azima, right? To, have, to be resolved, to be in vigilance of what's going on, what's going on with yourself. And he says it has three arkan, three pillars. أحدها التقيس بين نعمته وجنايتك. So to measure between his grace, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and your jinaya, your offense. Ibn Al-Taqi secondly he says that if you want to know, if you want to have hope, if you want to have raja, then انظر إلى ما إلى الله أو ما من الله إليك. and if you want to have hope, انظر ما منك إلى الله. right so Allah's blessing, His rahma, His ease, His love, it's uh, infinite, it's immeasurable. so why would you not have hope when you measure against all of that? and at the same time, your offense, if that's all who you are. Then why would you not be fearful, right? Compared to the great grace and uh, rahmah of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So vigilance then means I want to avail myself of all of Allah's grace, right? I want to be available that all of that can reach me, because the jinaya or the offense will be a preventive. It will be an obstacle to that. But at least by Allah. وهذا يشق على من ليس له ثلاثة أشياء. but this is difficult. what? المقايسة بين النعمة والجناية. وهذا يشق على من ليس له ثلاثة أشياء. نور الحكمة وسوء الظن بالنفس وتمييز تمييز النعمة من الفتنة. this is hard for to do for the one who lacks three things. first نور الحكمة the enlightenment of wisdom, right? You have to know what a jinaya is, you have to know what an offense is, and you have to know what a ni'ma is. If you don't know those things, if you can't recognize them, then it will be very hard for you to measure between the two. So you have to have a concept, right? And jinaya is not just kabeir. Uh, it's not just major sins. It's also minor sins. It's also zahir al-ith wa batin al-ith. Taqo zahir al-ith wa batin al so the jinaya of suqdhan, bad opinion of people, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of your state, of things around you, all of these are type of jinaya. So nur al-hikmah means that you have this light of wisdom, you're able to tell the difference. That's the first thing. Well, suqdhan bin nafs, right, having a mistrust of oneself. In other words, be monsif from yourself, but in soft with the nafs, which means that try to look at yourself as a neutral party from outside, rather than saying it's me, I'm right, uh, I deserve an uh, I need to do this, these people should treat me this way, all these type of things. Suit in the nafs means that you mistrust 
the opinion of your nefs when it's talking to you. When it tells you, uh, you're better than everybody else. You have to mistrust that uh, impulse because it wants you to believe something like that because that feels good, it's pleasurable. That's all what the nefs wants. It just wants satiation, shaba, and to feel good, to be pleasured. That's it. Doesn't want anything more than that. Whether it gets it from halal or haram is not its concern. But what it is concerned is that it gets what it wants. So you have to learn to mistrust that because it's very tricky. It will try to tell you things, right, in a way so that you would think, oh, that sounds like a good thing. And then you'll believe it, right? Your nafs may tell you, um, no one else can do this job right except me. Everybody at work is uh, stupid and is an idiot. And no one else can do a muhimma. This mission, except me, I can do it right only. Because if I don't do it, then everything's going to fail, so it's up to me. Ali, yani, yani, shahwa nafsiyyat. Right? It's your nafs. Because the nafs tuhibu riyasa, it likes to be in charge. It likes hijah, wasit, status and prestige. It likes people to look at it, have good soma, all that type of thing. So it's going to try to tell you in a way that you'll accept it. And say, well, uh, it's for the common good. So it tries to trick you. So a mistrust of that sentiment, right? To say, wait a minute, maybe it's not really like that. Because I'm talking to me about myself. Maybe someone else should say that. Then I have to be able to believe it. But if it's only me saying this to me, then I should have some mistrust of it. And then the third thing that you need to uh, measure between a da'ma, lojinaya, tamiz in da'ma, and then fitna. So, how can you tell the difference between the two? Right? Because sometimes it's easy to mix them up. So, ni'ma means something you've been given. It's a blessing. Right? We can both have um, a Mercedes S class, but for me it's fit that for you it's ni'ma. So it's not the thing, but it, it, what it leads to. So for the person where it's a ni'ma, they use it in the right way, uh, it's not in their heart, they drive to the places they should be driving to, they don't use it as a way to have rafahiyya um, and i'la' ala nas to feel better than them. If that's what it leads to, you may need fitna. It's a ni'ma, right, when you do use it in the right way. Fitna, when you use it in the wrong way. When you use it to empower the ego within you, then it becomes fitna. So it's not the thing itself. It's not the house, it's not the car, it's not the money even. But it is the effect that it has upon you. So tamiz in ni'mal, that's why he said tamiz, because normally we would say tamiz ni'mal fitna, this is completely two different things. Why would that be a skill you need to tell the difference between the two? You need to have to tell the difference between the two because they can easily get mixed up. One could look like the other. Well, mostly ni'ma, uh, looks like ni'ma to you, but it's actually fitna. Because it's affecting you, and it's hurting your akhirah. If it's helping your akhirah, you have ni'ma. If it's not helping your akhirah, or with dhurb akhiratik, when you can't tell from the dunya, pray a fitna. So that's the first thing, in terms of, that which will help to have the azima for al muhasaba the second thing tamiz ma al hatti amma lak aw mink fa ta'lam anna jinayata alayka hujjatun wa ta'atu alayka minna wa al hukmu alayka hujja ma huwa lak ma'dhira so the second is to know uh, to distinguish that which Allah has given you and what it expects from you Right? That which he has given you, life, ijad, imdad, he extends your life, 
It gives you all the faculties you need to live your life. Right? A mink, what does he ask from you? To use those things in the right way. To follow his commands, to avoid his permissions. Right? So if you do commit an offense, then it's a proof against you because you have been given exactly what you need, but nevertheless you go against it. Right? But the, the reverse is not true. Right? He didn't say something that's a gift. Right? That you didn't do or you didn't get because you deserve it. Right? So the opposite of minna is istihqa. Yani, I deserve this thing. I'm in minna, someone gives something to you, and it's a gift, completely. Not because of anything necessarily that you did or you didn't do. So that means all of the ta'at, the way we should look at them is that they're gifts. And not that we use them as a hujja against Allah, but that's what we do. Right? We said that yesterday. I feel like I'm a sali or a zaki or a rasul. If I'm a stahak, why did that? Saying like that, thinking like this, means That's basically what you do. When you have no right to do that, it's the opposite. Right? And the hukum here, which means hukm al wa qadr, right? It is a hujjah, but it's not an excuse for you to say, like, oh, when I can, okay, I was in a masan, I was in a masan, I was in a masan, I was in a masan. That type of excuse, it's bad etiquette. So, adab. Right? The hukma is a hujjah, true. But it's not for you to use as an excuse for not doing what we need to do. Because from our perception, from our understanding, from our perspective, right? Wallahu yaf'al. But I can also tell you, say, That's true. All of those things is true. وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَتْ Right? وَمَا رَمَيْتْ Right? هُنَا نَفِي إِذْ رَمَيْتْ إِذْ بَعْتْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَتْ إِسْتِدْرَاكْ so, three things happen. Can fi rami, right? This is talking about Ghazul Dad. Dani Thabat. That's Id Ramit. Walakin Tafi. Wama Ramit Id Ramit. Walakin Allah Rama. So it means on one level, you did do it. The level of Muhasada. Sah. And on another level, it was Allah who did it. The level of Qada wa Qadar wa Hukma Hujjah. So you can't go between the two and say, وكل معصية عيرت بها أخاك فهي إليك ولا تضيع ميزان وقتك من يديك. So the third to help in محاسبة for you to know that any obedience you consented to is a duty imposed upon upon you. Right. In other words, all of these ta'at that you think you need deserve something back is تحقق. He asked you to do it. So that means you're just fulfilling a duty. You're not doing above and beyond. You're not doing extra credit. So how can you ask something more in return when you're just fulfilling that duty that you were asked to do, that obligation? And any disobedience that you may have approached your brother for is yours. In other words, 
judging someone else based upon something that happened to them, right? It will come to you. That's why when we see mistakes from other people, right, we don't deal with them necessarily with the same reason, the same scale we deal with ourselves. Is they, we said ittiham al nafs, your own nafs, means don't accept excuses about yourself, from yourself. But do accept excuses about other people. In, in other words, find excuses for them. Right? We do the opposite. The al akharim, we always blame other people, we don't give them a single excuse. We say, Right? And for ourselves, we come up with a million excuses when it should be the opposite. That's why I said, So don't use this scale, this muhasaba scale, for other people. It's for you. It's not for you to judge other people. Right? And do not let the measure of your moments slip away from your hands. So, in the worksheet or the paper, I have only two things. Muhasana self vigilance. Define the meanings of obedience to Allah and defiance of Him as they relate to your responsibilities to Him. In other words, your obedience is just a fulfillment of an obligation, of a responsibility. And your defiance is not doing that responsibility. Not that it's supposed to bring uh, and entitle you to other things if you do it. You're just fulfilling your responsibility. When tempted to judge others and their actions, consider the effort and time lost in doing so by not considering your own shortcomings. Don't waste your time. That's what the last line meant. Don't waste your time with other people. What they did, how they did it, what were they thinking, what was their intention. Right? The Prophet said it and said about in the Shamaim. Jullah nadrihi and mulahadha. Jullah nadrihi and mulahadha. His lover, the way he looked at other people, Mugarla than Mulahaza. Not how Allah has put a haga. Mugarla than Mulahaza. I mean, he didn't go beyond just simple noticing. What's the opposite of that? Tahtid with Taftish. Right? Tahtish Ali with Al Khareen, Prophet didn't do that. He would ignore everything. He'd notice something and then he'd look away. Literally, he'd look away. He didn't want to see it, he didn't want to hear about it. To give people the excuse, right? To give people flexibility. Us, we do the opposite. So, exactly, I have to let me follow him around the corner, see where he's going. Right? So, we have to do the opposite. We have to do the the It's all called Taftish. And at the, 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 the least, it's a waste of time. The worst, it uh, uh, could lead to destruction of relationships between people if you pursue that course. Why not just say so? Right? Why not just say so? Why not just say so? So we'll move on to an inada, number four. So this is the first one where it kind of gets a little bit, uh, I would say, some of the fruits of the first three, where maybe it's the first maqam of sort of you, you begin to feel and uh, recognize that you're different. Still a little of a struggle, but now along with struggle there are some things that are coming your way. So he translated as uh, turning to God or turning to Allah. Allah Azza wa Jalla wa Anibu ila Rabbiku. So Inaba has a very, very similar meaning to Tawbah, but 
Here we're going to see there's, there's a difference between them. So he says that inaba thalatha to ashia, it's three things. Al rujua ila al haq islahan kama raja alayhi a'tidhara. Right, turning to Allah or returning to Him in reform as He returned for seeking forgiveness, making an apology to be forgiven. So that second one, that's Tawbah. So when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with A'tidhar, هَذَا يُسَمُّنَهُ Tawbah. When you return to Him Islahan, this is Inaba. What's the difference? Tawbah comes after the mistake. So it's like the thing that woke you up. To turn back to Allah is a mistake, something negative, it's an offense. Whereas in Inaba, you don't need the mistake to do that. You realize that by your very human nature, you need to return all the time. So it's not prompted by a mistake, but it's prompted now by knowledge, your knowledge, by a higher understanding. That's why Inaba is higher than Tawbah. And to return to him out of loyalty as he returned out of a vow. The second one is Tawbah. Right? Because when you make Tawbah, one of the conditions is you vow, you resolve not to do it again. And Tawbah. It's different. This is out of loyalty, right? Not because you want to make amends for a mistake, so you say you're not going to do it again, but because this is the way I should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You show loyalty, you show wafa, then when you the wafa, who is deserving of it, namely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last one, al rujoo alayhi halan kama raja alayhi ijabatan. So return to him, he says spontaneously, but I won't translate like that. I would say, by the nature of your state, your eternal state, as you did before, as a response. So you return what response to what to your sin. But here it's your actual high. Right? And the difference between someone who is munib versus a da'ib, 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 he doesn't really get the idea of returning back to Allah when things are going well, when things are good. It only usually works when things are bad, right, or difficult. Uh, somebody dies or loses the job, salawat, dua, shabbat al Quran, rock the shaykh, look up the dua, right? But when it's you think it's going well, no one goes to the Sheikh and asks him to add them, right? Or no one thinks that maybe I need to read the Quran or I have to do the Hajjud or extra salawat. We don't do that. We do it only when we feel like we need to. So it's in response to a, a, a perception of a need. Right? Whereas a rejoining had it, it's your state. It's not because you want something or because it's in response to something that bad that happened to you. It's because Allah SWT, uh, that's who He is and that's who I am. And that's how we should be with Him. So the inaba then is a more natural disposition, right? And it's more permanent and it's more consistent. Because it's not waiting for the response to a sin, but it's something that you do all the time. However, this is not going to become straight, right? It's not going to be productive except with three things. Was the Dirak al Fa'itat. Right? Bil Khuruj Min al Tabi'at, which he translates writing out liabilities. I don't, I don't know what that means, but al Tabi'at here means that 
those things in Tawbah which led you to make those mistakes, right? That we talked about earlier about circumstances. Khuruj minha. Leave it, right? Those things are kind of tailing you and getting in the way of having this inaba, right? So if you're still kind of letting these recurring situations happen, then it's going to be hard for you to be, to go from just toba. You'll be stuck with not stuck with toba. Right? You'll be kind of in the mode of just reacting. Whereas if you leave those things, then it frees you, allows you to go towards inaba. خروج من التبعات والتوجع للعثرات agonizing over missteps right والعثرات تشمل الذنوب right it includes sins and also includes things يعني maybe not so much as a sin but kind of a turn in the wrong direction so التوجع right to feel agonized over that how can I let this happen again I want to be beyond this I want to move on because inaba means you're you're leaving this right and returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every time you you go back to this a little bit, it's painful, it's agonizing. And at the same time you realize that your past may have been littered with things you regret. So you want to have uh istidrak, you want to set it right in a way that you can so that your slate is clean. ولم يستقيم رجوع إليه وفاء بثلاثة أشياء. To return to him by وفاء by loyalty will be right with three things: بالخلاص من نذة الذنب وبترك الاستهانة بأهل الغفلة تخوف عليه مع رجاء لنفسك والاستصطاء في رؤية علة الخدمة ولم يستقيم رجوع إليه حالا ثلاثة أشياء. So the first بالخلاص من نذة الذنب to deliver yourself from the pleasure of sin. The reason that people usually continue to sin, and have a hard time stopping it, is because they find it pleasurable. If it was painful, they would stop. But if it feels good, and it's pleasurable, they can continue to do it. So to return Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of loyalty, by way of wafa, and not by way of we have promised to do so, you have to get to a level of knowledge and realize that this thing that you thought was pleasurable is actually painful. So maybe it's pleasurable hissen, but it's painful ma'na, hyphen ma'na. So that means you're putting your, your hikmah, your light of your hikmah, before you put your physical pleasures. That requires training to do that, right? It requires uh, understanding and knowledge that I leave it off even though physically I may like it but mentally, spiritually, emotionally I realize it's a painful thing and by recalling this enough then eventually even physically it may elicit a responsive pain from you people who quit smoking and then they go into a smoky room they can't stand it right? because they left that and now, it's so far removed from them that if they're reintroduced to it, they can't even take the smell itself. So, uh, it requires a bit of, uh, of consistency in order to do that. وَبِتَرْكِ الْإِسْتِهَانَ بِأَهْلِ الْغَفْلَةِ تَخَوُّفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ تَخَوُّفًا عَلَيْهِمْ بَعَ رَجَاءِ لِنَفْسِكِ And also, ceasing to belittle the people of Ghafla, right? Not necessarily the people of sin, but the people of Ghafla. And this, I think, uh, it's an understated principle, but it's very important here. It's one of the problems that newly religious people or newly uh, committed people have is they become quickly judgmental. Because they were sort of like that. And when they see other people like that, it kind of reminds them of themselves. And they don't want to be reminded that that's the way they used to be. So one of the things that they do is 
very quickly judge people, right? Even though they were not so different in that situation. Um, and here it's saying it's an obstacle. It's going to get in your way if you do that. So, تَرْكِ الْإِسْتِهَانَ بِأَهْلِ الْمَعْرَى مَا عَرَجَعْ لِنَفْسِكِ Right? So, you're still afraid for them. Right? Not that you belittle them, think you're better than them. You're afraid for them. And you're hopeful for yourself that you move beyond that. But not to look at it as I am better than they are. And they're going to You don't know how anybody's going to end up. And so, there should be some type of even tarahum ala ahl al Right? Because you were there once too. You may still be there, you don't realize it. And you're talking about these people and you're cursing them and you're saying all these sorts of things. So, let that go. Right? Leave the judgment to Allah subhanahu wa What is to start with in any khidmah? And then scrutinizing in order to perceive the failings in your service, your khidmah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another thing newly religious people do. That they see and they overestimate the amount that they're doing because it's so vastly different than they were before. Right? Such a big gap. They think, ala khalas, wa salta ala khalas. You know, I am, uh, you know, I'm a big deal now because, you know, I'm not even like that anymore. But the road is always ahead of you. Right? There's always more to be done. So one way to help with that is this thought, which means to really take it to the furthest degree in scrutinizing and evaluating the defects of your khidmah, of your ibadah, of your obedience. Right? In ibadah, tantasa with ikhlas, with hudur, right? The least thing. You may be doing it right physically, but in your heart in it 100% the whole time. So think about those things so that you don't see yourself as superior to those people that you used to be like. And then the last thing, right, to return to him by your state rather than just by a response to a sin. But yes, with Amalek. So it becomes right return to him by state with three things despairing of your own actions. In other words, realize that it's not really your deeds that are going to do the thing for you, but Allah's mercy is going to do it for you. No one enters paradise by their deeds, they enter paradise by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, min al-amal means stop putting so much uh, trust in them that they'll be the ones to guide you along, but rather seek Allah's grace, His permission, His love. And Serving your own, serving your own. Well, that's not a good translation. Here in Mu'ayana, right, in verses Al-Ikhbar, uh, right, لَيْسَ الْخَبْرُكَ الْمُعَيَنَ لَيْسَ الْخَبْرُكَ الْعَيَنَ It means, أَنْتَ مُطَّارْ مُطَّارْ means, you are in complete need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your deeds are not going to put you in a state where you don't need Him anymore. Your accumulation of wealth is not going to put you in a state you don't need them anymore. So the wa'ayin, it means you, you actually see that, you live that. Rather than just kind of <clears throat> think it's true, but you don't really live your life like that. You don't feel it. So wa'ayin is an ittira. Right? Man yujibu muttallat ida da'a. Right? The muttal is the one who is either physically muttal, the ma'adumin, they really have nothing, or spiritually muqtar. You know, they realize they have nothing, even though they may have something <coughs> physically. So wa'id al ittira means see it as it really is. And then that way you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your hand. Because the one who is self-sufficient is not going to go anywhere else. They think, I don't need anyone but myself. 
as Qarun said, so you didn't go anywhere else. But if you see that you're mudar all the time, then you're always going to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa shir ba qutwihi bik. And then here realizing uh, the beauty of Allah's lutf with you. Because if he really wanted to deal with us by his ad, by his justice, we wouldn't have anything whatsoever. Nobody would deserve anything. We would have zero. So to think how magnanimous, how noble, how latif is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that despite all of our failings and our shortcomings, nonetheless he gives us uh, in hand, he gives us pause. And he gives us many, many opportunities always to come back. So consider this as well. So in the exercises, we never sort of emphasizing what we said before, contemplate returning to Allah by your state as you did by way of your words and acts in Tawbah. And we attribute your good deeds to Allah and His mercy and your bad ones to your own shortcomings. And recognize that salvation is not found in your deeds, but ultimately by Allah's mercy. And as I said, this one, number four, it's kind of the bridge between uh, newly, being newly committed and then being on your way to the path of uh, the Odia. Well, my voice is fairly <coughs> So here the tone changes a little bit, and less emphasis on you, on the self. Tawba, and then we did uh, Yathala, then Tawba, then Muhasada. Very much it's kind of uh, self-purification. It's looking at removal of vice. What the ulama of the soul called a tahliya, called a tahliya. So tahliya, you have to remove all of the negative things. You have to remove all the rubbish before you can grow the garden in this place. If you try to grow the garden while there's all rubbish and garbage all over the place, it's still going to look ugly. But once you have that removed, then you can start to grow things. So here, at Tafakwa, you're beginning to grow a type of Iman that is going to be much more sustainable than what most people have, which is kind of the I commit a mistake uh, response to the mistake. And then a period of ghafla, then I commit another mistake or some calamity happens to me, a little bit of a waking up, and then I forget the long period of ghafla, and then we wait for the next kind of uh, crisis whether it's a sin or whether it's a, a loss. But beginning with Inaba and then going through here with the it's a different approach. It's now trying to build within you a more even and steady approach to your Iman so that you don't have long periods of Bafna. You're kind of on all the time. We have set down to you the dhikr that you may explain clearly to men what has been sent down to them that they may reflect. So, the fact here is related to dhikr. And the next chapter is Tadakur. But in this sense, the dhikr or the Qur'an is a means by which you can reach Tadakur. The dhikr points you in the direction of Tadakur, of reflection or contemplation. Right? And he's going to say, what is it that you're going to contemplate about? What is it you're going to think about? 
you're going to think about things that will leave you to have a more certain iman, greater certainty. Ziyadati yaqeen. So he says, Alam in the fiqh, Talamus al basirati al istidrak al bughya, wa wa thalathatu anwa. We should know that reflection is the search for insight at aiming at setting right the objective. Basira, right, I don't think he used this word before in this book, but basira is a type of sight, a type of seeing, a type of knowing, a type of realizing. And it's a realization of the heart. And in order for your basira to work, then it has to begin, as he says here, with some type of tafakkur, right? Some type of contemplation or reflection. And then that will lead you to the goal, which is ultimately to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Him, right? Not that you go through long periods unaware, and then when you make a mistake, it's a crisis, so forth. But you have a sort of constant Basira, where as if you're seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said it's three types. Fikratun fi ayni tawheed, wa fikratun fi lata'i fi sunah, wa fikratun fi ma'ayni al-a'amani wal ahwal. So the first, fi ayni tawheed, the essence of the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one in his acts and his attributes and his essence. So realize that the author of everything that goes on in the universe is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that all those acts go back to uh, tawheed of his attributes which are all contained in the tawheed of the essence. So to think about those things, to contemplate those things. Thinking about the magnificence of creation. Right? In the Fiqh of the Samawat and the Adwa, the Lahmi Nani or the Haq. The Ayah. The Ayah to the Ulil Abbas. There's uh, signs in the creation of the heavens and the earth, turning of the day into night, and night into day, for those who want to reflect. So seeing the perfection in the order of the universe is a means by which to have a greater understanding and certainty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a type of tafakkur. And reflection about the meaning of deeds and conditions. Right? There are secrets, there are wisdoms behind all of the a'mal that, that have a good effect upon you. It's not just the outward act itself, but think about the meanings, the deeper ones that are there. So then he says, With regard to reflection about the essence of Tawheed, it constitutes the intrusion to the sea of denial from which none is saved without taking shelter in the glow of discovery and adhering to the clear knowledge. Here what he's saying is, when you contemplate Tawheed, you can't contemplate Allah how He really is. It's impossible. You can't think of it. It's not a place your mind can go. How is Allah? How is He before time and then He's still after time? And where is He? These are all questions you cannot contemplate because there's no answers to them. Because we don't have a frame of reference <coughs> by which to answer and think about those things. So you think about makhlukatillah, where I think about the creation of Allah and not the essence, datillah. Otherwise, it will lead you, as he says here, ihtiham bahr jahud. It will take you into the sea of denial. Right? You could lose yourself if you try to think about those things. So, stick to, uh, he says here, that some the other cash. Allah may reveal some things to you by unveiling them to you, and also, 
Just stick to what the Quran says. Allah will ayyidu hayyidu qayyim la ta'khudu sayyidu wa la Verses like that, clear in meaning. And just think about those meanings. وَمَا الْفِكْرَةُ فِي لِطَالِفِ الصَّنَاعِ فَيَا مَا يُسْقِي زَرْعَ الْحِكْمَةِ but thinking about the salaya, right, think about the creation, magnificence of Allah, then it will irrigate wisdom within you, right? That's the route that you should take, not the route of thinking about Allah's essence. Right, it will help you in the way of haqiqah, why? Because the sharia was haqiqah. Right, Sharia is the outward acts that we do. And what Hatiba is where it leads you to, gives you a greater understanding of the reality. And so contemplation upon Ma'ani al-A'mal wal ahwal is a bridge between the Sharia and in between is the Tariqa, you actually doing those things, and then that leads you to al Hatiqa, a greater understanding and opening. ونوع يتخلص من فكرة في عن التوحيد بثلاثة أشياء بمعرفة عجز العقل وبالياس والوقوف على الغاية وبالاعتصام بحبل التعظيم. So if you're stuck in this عن التوحيد, thinking about what really is Allah, there's three things that will help you get away from that. معرفة عجز العقل to know that your intellect ultimately it's not going to get you everywhere. Logic can only take you so far. There are places where logic can't go. And one of those places is the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Logic can't take you there. I would say logic also couldn't take you to many of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he's alim and he's qadir and he is murid and he is hay and he's mutakallim. The, 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 the real essence of those things, it's not a place where the mind is going to lead you to. All it's going to tell you is, he is well above and beyond anything you can imagine. But the reality of it, no way you can know. You don't have a frame reference to do that. So to admit to yourself that I may not be able to understand everything right now, or ever, <coughs> is an important concept here. But don't make the mistake that some try to say about the deen is that Islam al That's impossible. We're not talking about al What we're talking about here is a place where your aql can't go anymore. But is there anything al Don't wait. Not possible. There is nothing that will go against that at all. There's nothing in the deen that's mustahil al can happen. Why? Because it's the aqla that we use to perceive the deen to begin with. So how can the instrument that we're using declare something to be impossible, but then that which it perceives, right, from the sharia goes against that? It's a contradiction. It cannot happen. So there's a difference between what they call uh, irrational and super rational in English. Irrational means uh, intellect can't accept it. It's impossible. So the deen will never be irrational. Super rational means beyond the intellect. Beyond what the intellect can perceive. Modern society today, modern knowledge, right? Anything you're going to study in any university, whether it's Ayn Shams or Harvard, it's going to tell you the same thing. That uh, the mind is kind of tells you about knowledge. And to say that there's something beyond the mind, they would reject it. To them, they'd say, oh, that's irrational. Say, so, you no, know, it's not irrational. I'm saying it's super rational. It's beyond the perception of the mind. But just because something is beyond the perception of the mind doesn't mean it's real or it's not real. The angels are beyond our perception of our mind. But that does it make them not real. Or the akhir, or you already said, all of these things are real, even though they're beyond the perception of the mind right now. So two different things, super rational and irrational. 
وبالقياس من الوقوف على الغاية despairing of understanding the goal right because the lie the goal uh, it's not a set thing there's always more that you can go forward with there's always more that you can know there's never a point where you say I'm alive well, I'm late with that and that's it no. there's still more to do so realize this right so rather than be, being concerned with maqamat and ahwal and karamat and all that stuff just be concerned with Allah. Just say Allah. That's, don't worry about kushufat, uh, anwar, ulayat, karamat. All that stuff is periphery. But be concerned only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last word in this part. والاعتصام بحبل التعظيم and holding to the rope or cord of تعظيم right تعظيم is what the mind does when it realizes it can't go any further so when I say Allah SWT عظيم من حيث المعنى والمكان right beyond what I can I can uh, I can describe what I think وعظيمه right I put him beyond that Right, we say Allahu Akbar, right, and this is Ism Tawdeed, right, Akbar min Ish. Usually we say Fulan Atwal min, you know, Allah. But when we say Allahu Akbar, there's no min, because it says a superlative is two things have this attribute and one is more than the other. So, Ahmed Atwal min Zayd. That means. في طول في زيد وفي طول في أحمد ولكن زاد أحمد على زيد في الطول. so I can't say Allah أكبر من الكون مثلا right not in that sense not in size but I say أكبر من حيث البعض أكبر من كل شيء because they don't have the sifr sifr this attribute of of size or kibr or kibriyat like it's in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma'adun, fil makhluqat. So what we're really saying is, Allahu akbar with us, wa'athimu, Allahu a'adhan. Right? Just beyond even comparison to something else. That's the true meaning of ta'afi. That's really even, you can't compare it to something else, beyond comparison. وَنَمَا تُدْرَكُ لَطَالَ فِي الصَّلَاعِ بِثَلَاثِ الْأَشْيَاءِ How can you realize the magnificence of the creation? بحسن النظر في مبادئ المنن والإجابة لدواعي الإشارات وبالخلاص من رق الشهوات. First حسن النظر في مبادئ المنن. Which is to have a good outlook and appreciation and another contemplation of مبادئ المنن. Right, the the very principles of the minan, of all of the gifts that you've been given, right, and to realize that um, not just looking at the individual gifts, but it's mabadi that they came from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's what makes them amazing. That's what makes them great. Not the little thing, but where it came from. Where the word mabadi is assessed. What ijabu duwari isharat. And responding to the requirements of signals, right? Allah in the creation will give you signals about things. What we call it ibra. Fa'tabiru ya ulil absa. Right? It didn't say fa'tabiru ayu al mu'minin, al mu'minun, or muslimun, ulil absa. In other words, ashab al basir al basira. So this atibar means. That you see there's a certain da'i. في مصيبة حصلت. It's an ishara. Right? It's a, a sign to something else. Or some change in your circumstance or somewhere else. It's a sign. Right? For you to read it. Uh, for you to contemplate it. And then to have a particular understanding of the, the magnificence of creation. That's what's the idea behind it. وَالْخَلَاسِ بِالْرَقْبِ لَيْتِ الشَّهَوَاتِ 
and deliverance from the yoke of uh, mere passions. In other words, if you're so busy with eating and drinking and uh, watching your TV programs and watching your social media and all of these shahwat you're drowned in, you don't notice anything else. You don't have time to notice anything else. You have less of that hiss, less of a basira. Right? Because there's a relationship with when you are satiated, it deadens your spiritual senses. When your physical senses are heightened and satiated, then it has the adverse effect on your spiritual sense. So in Ramadan, we fast because it gives us an idea what it would be like. Right, when our spiritual senses are heightened, when we have a greater appreciation, the listening to the Quran will have a more powerful effect. Right? The things you can perceive and the signs that they mean may be more readily available when you're in this state, rather than uh, encumbered and uh, drowning in your passions, in your shahwa. And then the last thing, inama فَيُقَفُ بِالْفِكْرَةِ عَلَى مَرَطِبِ الْأَعْمَالِ وَالْأَحْوَالِ لِثَلَثِ الْأَشْيَاءِ بِاسْتِصْحَابِ الْعِلْمِ وَالْتِهَامِ الْمَنْسُومَاتِ وَمَعْرِفِ الْمُوَاقَعِ الْغَيْرِ Three things will bring out a reflection about the levels of deeds and conditions. بِاسْتِصْحَابِ الْعِلْمِ Knowledge, I won't say science, but knowledge. Um, right. Because that's a field where you can easily be deluded, guru. And the opposite of guru is ilm. So you need to stick to ilm al zahir, right? To outward knowledge. So you don't go into the path of guru. You don't go into the path of delusions. Because you can delude yourself thinking about, you know, what is the meaning of this ibadah and that ibadah and this thing. But stick to ilm al zahir. Stick to knowledge. And that will, that will guide you on your path. With tihab al marsumat. Indicting the old traces. I don't know how he means by that. But al um, mansumat means just the ostensible outward aspects of things. Right? There are people who are very literalist. Right? And they go by hafiyin. Uh, you know, they're so consumed with al hafiyya of the ibadah, of certain aspects of life, they don't see that there's ma'ani, right? Wara al mabani. So it's not just al mabna, but what does it mean? Right? Al Murmi to Salih Khalas. Not Mishwar Salih Khalas. Salatana Mashana al Mukha. Right? Salah Murajah. If you're not feeling those things, you know, itaham al Marsumat. You know, have a suspicion of the way that you're doing it. And it's not just the outward aspect. But there's ma'ani behind it. So always look towards that. And then finally, Ma'rifat Mawaqa and Zayr, and knowing the positions of others. Contemplating the marvels of creation and the relationship to Allah's attributes. So when you see Hat Marzu, Hatunda, Mimurahi Raza, right? Hat Lutuf Bihi, Hat Al Latif. So the names and attributes come alive to you when you see their athar, when you see their effects in the creation. So think about the relationship between those two things uh, as you go throughout your day. Contemplate the immeasurable extent of Allah's mercy and the blessings He has bestowed upon you. Citing some explanation. And then recognize the shortcomings of, should be your contemplation, to arrive at a truer understanding. Don't think that the tafakkur is going to get you everywhere. There's barriers, right? We said the mind has 
particular place where it's going to stop. And there has to be just tafweed. There has to be acquiescence. It has to be sort of a istislam and accept the idea that you can't figure everything out. Which I said before, does it mean that it can't be figured out? It just means right now, it cannot be figured out just with your intellect. It's something that Allah has to show you in a different way. So, we don't say that there are uh, uh, mysteries in the deed, things that no one can ever know. No, Allah knows them. And who He chooses to want to know will know them too. So, do we know for sure what Alif Lam Mim means? What Kafha Ain Saad? Alif Lam Ra? The Surah? Don't know for sure. But some people have offered interpretation, which means there's meanings behind them. We don't just say we have no idea. There are meanings behind it. Hatil ayat al tashabihat. Right? We don't say they're meaningless. The only thing we're saying is, right? the outward meaning can't be it. Doesn't make sense with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that doesn't mean there's not a meaning to it. There is a meaning to it. But it is something, like Imam Malik said, Ar Rahman al Ashastawa, uh istiwa ma'alum wal kif dhir ma'kul. Right? So he said the verse is true. We know what istiwa means in language. But how that works, the modality, how dhir ma'kul, yani foktor al aq, it's not your intellect's gonna get it. But it can still be known. Right? But by another means, what we call the super rational. By Allah putting the meaning in your heart, by unveiling it to you, by kashf, whether in this life or perhaps in the next life. So that's the fact. And I think um, we'll just take a five minute break um, to regain my voice a little bit, and then we'll come back. Uh, <coughs> So, uh, any questions? So, I think, uh, we'll finish it tomorrow, but for the rest of the 15 minutes, we, can, uh, we didn't get a chance to do questions yesterday, so if there's any questions, we can, uh, we can do them now. Safe. Alex, what? something like, uh, you know, usually when we think about contemplation, But it's actually well wonderful. It's no different. anyway. when we think about how will all these things should be subhanallah. Right? The Sifa Min Sifat, or the Sifa Min Sifat, or the Qadr, or the Murid, or the Latif, or the Satr, for example, the Ayub, the Kullah, and the Nasm, 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 بس بمجرد الفكر والتفكير وشر المخ والقلب كمان الاقي المعاني دي تبقى يعني حيه تمام في ناس عايشه كده على فكره يعني حتى اذا صادفوا مكروه او حاجه بتؤذيه ما بيقولش 
فلان وأذاني وفلان عمل لي بيقول لا ما عملتي مع ربنا ربنا هو اللي ورا الحاجة دي وهو عايز يوريني إن هو مثلا هو القهار أو هو المنتقم أو هو المقتدر ما دي من صفاتي كمان إذا عرفت ربنا سبحانه وتعالى هو الرحيم هو الرحمن هو اللطيف مش هنعرفه من من الأسماء التانية يبقى السورة عندنا ناقصة مش كاملة يبقى كده مش هنعرف ربنا العارف بالله يعرفه من صفات جماله ومن صفات جلاله ومن صفات كماله يعرفه من كل النواحي كل النواحي It's possible, but I think it's, it's improbable. Because um, awakening means realization, then be that you want to do something different. So if you say, okay, I, I want to do something different, but then you never do do something different, then maybe I'd say, yeah, maybe you are deluded in that sense. But if someone is already on the path to try to do something different, yeah, you already is going into tawbah and muhasaba, then we can say, no, definitely there was a, you know, there was some type of yaqala, there was some type of work that had to happen for, for them to do those things, I think. I don't, but I, uh, I don't know, I think it would be difficult to, to do that. But you can know. still go into like a ghafla after having awakened, or does that...? Yeah, of course. Remember, each one of these things is, there's different kind of levels in it too. So, the awakening of some person can be much less than awakening of somebody else, and the total of some person will be less than something else. And there's overlap too. Just because it seems like I'm still waking up to things, doesn't mean that I'm also not being contemplating things, or Bahasab Dafsi, or Batub Bin Ashiya. All those things can be going on at the same time, but actually, most probably they are, but your levels will vary. So I think what he's trying to show in each one of them, there's a certain optimal level you want to shoot for, you want to reach for. Uh, and if you achieve that, then you're like uh, a Seir, you know, the one who's, who's moving on their way. Thank you. You're welcome. Related to that question, but I have uh, now, uh, okay, I'm not mustn't I'm waiting for the, uh, any manzilla or any nanaba ashna or kaza or kaza. Just have said, just think Allah and kida. Lama, how do you know? You know, mustn't okay. Now I'm on the right track. I will know. Okay, I'm not. I'm getting better. Oh, yani. Okay, I'm not waiting for a lahoa, but I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And uh, this is just a book. It's it's just providing a <laughs> framework. And I have another little sheikh. That's what they're supposed to do to help you along that way. Sometimes you can be too hard on yourself. Maybe you say, oh I'm, oh, I'm such a bad person, no matter what I do is not good enough. So how do you also, yeah, because also if you listen to the next thing, that's why uh, I don't know. That's why, Rufi says, I'm a sheikh, I'm a sheikh, I'm a sheikh, I'm a sheikh. Oh, you have a good friend, right, who can actually, you know, be a mirror for you. They can mirror some things for you. Because you can't see those things within yourself. Sa'ab. It's difficult. So that's really what sadaqa means. Yani sadaqa. Yani ba'duna ba'd. People don't understand what that means anymore. Ahna we do al aks. We need to sakteen at haga. Ashim shazin nixir e fulan. 
the rest of it, but right because you uh, you you're you're lying to them. You're lying because you know that if you hang a lot, you don't want to say anything. Shaisa so, so it's as if you're deceiving them. In tehein, in the rest of so true sadaqa means right? <coughs> but people, uh, I, I think they, uh, they don't understand that anymore. طبعاً نصيحة دي لها قواعد ولها شروط ولها أداب يعني أولاً أن الحاجة اللي هنصح الأخ والأخت فيه لازم يكون أمر يعني واضح من من حيث الشريعة ومجمع عليه مش حاجة فيها خلاف يعني ثانياً مفروض النصيحة دي تؤدى بطريقة بأسلوب بحيث يكون في قابلية للموضوع مش أفضاح النصيحة في الملا فضيحة فتكون على جنب في السر بطريقة بحيث أن أقدم الحاجة يعني بأسلوب هو ممكن أو هي تقبل الموضوع يعني في ناس عايزين ينصحوا وعايزين يمروا بالمعروف وفي نفس الوقت عايزين التالي اللي أمامه يعني يحس بالإهانة دي مش نصيحة بقى دي حاجة جواك انت بتحركك مش 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 نصيحة دي انت عاوز تبقى مستعلي على قدامك فانت لقيت الفرصة اه اهو وقع في البتاع اللي انا كنت اتوقع انه هيوقع فيها خليني بقى ادي له كلمتين دي مش نصيحة الأفضل هو هيسكت لو كان هو حد حاسس بال بال بالنزعة دي جواه يبقى يسكت أحسن أما إذا وفى بالشهود وكمان يكون صادق مع نفسه يقول في نفسه طيب هل المهم أن أنا أنصحه ولا أي واحد أو أو هو ينصح يعني مش شرط أن أنا أكون الناصع يعني أقدر لو كان في واحد غيري في مكان أو, أو, أو ممكن هذا الشخص موجود حد أو مش موجود بس بس يقدر هو موجود هل كان هو أنا بفضل أن هو ينصح ولا أنا أنصحه ولا ما شفنا معي ولا أنا مصمم ان انا لازم كل الناس ينصحوا لو انا مصمم انا انصحه يبقى دي فيها مشكلة برضه انا لازم بقى ادي له كلمتين لا انا انا عاوز نصيحة يعني ايه؟ ايرادة الخير للغير يعني الموضوع مش اي علاقة بنفسي علاقة بالشخص تماما فاذا انا بقى قلت ان يعني أنا لازم أنصح، أنا لازم أقول، أنا لازم أولي، أنا كلمة أنا دي لو تصدر كل جملة الداخلية دي بيبقى خلاص بلا، وبعدين أخيراً أنا أشوف الموقف المآلات زي ما العلماء بيقولوا النظر إلى المآلات، هل لو قلت الكلمة دي أو أو طرحت الفكرة دي يعني هل فعلاً هيستفيد ولا ممكن ينكمش أو ممكن ما ينزارش وممكن يعني يزداد سوءا هل هتقع الموقع المطلوبة أو مش هتقع الموقع المطلوبة يعني زي كثير من الناس بيسألون طب أنا والدي بيعمل كذا وكذا والدتي بتعمل كذا وكذا احنا مش هنا ربي أباءنا يعني هم ربونا فالنصيحة القدر من الأباء لازم تكون بطريقة معينة غير طريقة مثلا أنا أنا نصيحة لإبني أو أختي أو أخويا أو صاحبي أو زميلي في الشغل لا هتختلف يعني وممكن الأفضل ما أقولش حاجة خالص وممكن الأفضل أنا النصيحة دي هتيجي في مثلا صورة أو إطار معاملة معينة هتكون بالتنجيح مش هتكون بالصراحة وهكذا يعني خالص كان في ان 
The awakening consists of three things. And the third one was being alert in the increase and decrease of days. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand. Zayad al Muqsal al Ayyam. The increase and decrease. Okay, the time is going to be a lot of time. Like an increase in the time. No, I think what he meant is. Uh, that as we go along, the days will be less. But I think uh, increase in the days, not increase of the days. Increase in the days. Yani ziyada fil wat. Ziyada fil baraka, ziyada fil. How many say no? Ta'mir. Ta'mir al ayyam or ta'mir al wat means you're using every moment in your day and your time usefully. Right, because every day, rather than when you waste your time, complete decrease. What what خلاص ضاع. What do we mean when we say واحد بيضيع وقته? Means ما مش حاجة كويسة في وقته يعني ما في 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 لا مفيد. أما إذا كان في المفيد ما نقولش إنه ضيع وقته، بنقول هو استثمر وقته. Uh, knowing the nature of time, زيادة ونقصان, how that works. Right? You can look at the Ma'ani, and I don't know what, and I have to be زيادة. No, I don't have to say what you have to do with Naqsa. Yes? ويأمر بالخير ويأمر بال 
إيتاء الزكاة وإقامة الصلاة خلاص في أوامر أنفذها وفي نواهي أتقلبها وبينهما أمر الله سبحانه وتعالى بينزلها كالقضاء فأنا لست معترضا على هذا القضاء ولكن عندما أنظر بميزان الشرع والله سبحانه وتعالى يقول لي أشياء وينهاني عن أشياء فأمشي على هذا الميزان Everybody's different. Everybody's different. صح. طبعا when we say Allah chooses, there are kind of <coughs> type of asbab that he talks about a little bit. But the whole idea is this is not a sabbat for that. You're not supposed to look for that. Yeah. Then Allah secondary says to shawufuka ila ma batna fika min al ayub. خير لك من تشوفك إلى ما ضاب عنك من أو ما سطر عنك من الغيوب أو بطن عنك من الغيوب. Your interest in your problems, your shortcomings, fixing them. It's better for you to think about that than what's hidden from you, you know, in the cash and all that stuff that people get so interested in. Because that's not the goal, right? That's something that can be given to you. That's why they said you don't work for that. It can be given to you. What you work for is to remove your vices and replace them with virtues and your, your life as Allah wants you to live it. If He gives you things like mumkin, right? But that's not even necessarily a sign. Not necessarily. It could be, but not necessarily a sign that in the, you know, uh, are in that category. There are many of the awliya, they didn't seem to have these very outward unveiling type of karamat. And one of the teachers of our teachers, he was asked by his students, Ya Shaykh, I have to look at you, you are a Shaykh, and 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 you are a So he said, I am a Shaykh, and 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 That's called istiqama. Well, istiqama akbaru karam. Kul al awliya aluki. Istiqama akbaru karam. Fa tu kul mustaqi. Right? Mashi sah. Muttaqi. Yani, try show the nas, tishwil al khatir, and kalam al khutu. That is not istiqama. But that's akbar karam. Count the number of people you know who are like that. to see the quantum level of the atom, there was a certain, uh, cert they had a certainty about the way the world works and the physical laws, right? The Newtonian laws, the three laws of Newton. Uh, and everybody was agreed upon those things. Once they get to the quantum level and they see that what they're looking at is actually mostly empty space with 
electrons and neutrons and protons. And then there are these things in there they cannot identify either as a wave or as a particle, which are the two of uh, two categories of, of mass. One of those scientists, his name was Heisenberg, and probably the most famous principle in science is called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Yeah, and he doesn't know, and you can't know. That's what he said, you can't know. Shut up. The scientist said that. So, those people who say, like, we can know everything or get to the mysteries of it and all that, they don't read their own stuff because at the quantum level they can't know anything. They admitted that they can't know. Even the things they talk about in the universe, right, uh, they give names to things, they don't know what it is. And people don't realize that. Do you hear about dark matter? You know what that is? What's dark matter? Where's that? We heard that the universe is full of it, right? What does that mean? Yeah, it is dark matter. They needed to explain some phenomena like gravity. I don't know. Scientists assume there is a constant density to the whole universe. And they still abide by that principle. Mm -hmm. However, they find in certain pockets of the solar system of the universe, that can't make sense. So they said, okay, what do we do now? Do we abandon that idea? And then we kind of don't admit we don't know anything? Or, let's say those places where it doesn't work, we'll just call it something else. <laughs> and they said, well, I know. Let's call it, instead of matter, dark matter. And then that dark matter will be all those places in the universe where our laws and principles don't work. I, I'm not so oversimplifying, but we'll get to the result. But people you know, assume that because they, you know, scientists, <clears throat> some people call it scientism, which means that you take science as the only <coughs> way to know the universe at the exclusion of all else. That's what we call scientism, right? And they don't know. What they don't know is way more than they do know. So it's premised on a false philosophy, namely that by enough experimentation and improving our instruments of observation, make the better telescope and the better microscope, that eventually we'll know all the answers. Stephen Hawking, he has this idea that, he, that the movie was made about it, what do you call it? The theory of, what does he mean by the theory of everything? He's looking for the thing that explains the whole universe. What's that? I want to say, <laughs> We already have the theory of everything. It's looking you in the face, right? But you don't see it, because he doesn't want to admit that that's the theory of everything. So they call it meta-narrative, they say theory of everything, it's all these things. This one mathematical equation or maybe set of equations that's going to explain the whole universe. They'll never find that. Right? Because we already have the answer. Allah is a theory of everything. And it's not a theory. He is the real. He is the hot uh, uh, of everything. So it's important, I think, that we, we read up. Uh, Dr. Omar actually introduced me to a particular, particular set of books that uh, is very enlightening in this regard. It's written by a Christian theologian and scientist, his name is Wolfgang Smith. And he has several books uh, about this uh, that uh, are very enlightening if you read them. And he's a committed Christian, but at the same time, uh, he believes uh, he's a scientist and he points out many of the fallacies that uh, scientism tries to show. And basically, at the end of the day, you realize that you just can't know everything, there's things beyond what your intellect can perceive. Thank you.